Hi everyone, I'm Megan and I'm going to be running through a quick introductory demo of the EventFlow software. So we're going to be starting out with this simple data set that consists only of point events. This is a data set of patients being transferred through the various departments of a hospital. So you have events like the patient arriving at the hospital, being transferred to the emergency room, the ICU, uh, one of the floor rooms, and then uh, the actual outcome of the patient, whether they die or whether they get discharged alive. So when you have a data set like this, a data set consisting of multiple records and these temporal uh, events, what you usually get is a display like the one you see here on the right. So you have each patient uh, plotted against its own timeline, and you have each of the individual events all sort of separate on their own uh, separate timeline. So the problem with this display, it's very effective for understanding what's happening in sort of one individual record, but it makes it difficult to ask population level questions like what are the most common patterns, what are the uh, anomalous patterns uh, if a patient gets transferred to the ICU, where do they typically get transferred after that, where do they typically come from. Uh, the best you can do is sort of scroll through all, we have a hundred records here, so the best you can do is sort of scroll through all a hundred records, and even then it's basically impossible uh, to get really a good sense of these population level trends. So what we do in event flow is we create a second view, which is called the aggregated view, which we can turn on here. And the way the aggregated view works is we plot the event sequence across the horizontal axis, so the horizontal axis is time, and the vertical axis is the number of the records. So each one of these bars represents the number of records that got aggregated into this bar. And these two views are interactive. So if I'm interested in this group of patients, I can click on that chunk of the aggregated display, and in the individual display, it highlights the patients that I selected. So let's see, it highlighted uh, 12 of the 100 records, and these are all the patients that arrived, went to the emergency room, then went to the ICU, then went to the floor, uh, and then got discharged alive. And as you can see, if I scroll over, uh, we plot these, hor these bars horizontally uh, by averaging the time lapse across all 12 of these records that get aggregated into this bar. But if you want to see the actual distribution of how long it took patients to, to be discharged alive after they were transferred to the floor, you can scroll over that section. What you get is an actual distribution. So if I'm interested in only the people who um, took a long time to get discharged alive after being transferred to the floor, I can highlight those records from the actual distribution and then only those records of the 12 get selected. So now I only have six records selected. So let's see. So the other thing you can do uh, with the aggregated view and the, in the, uh, the individual view is you can align by a specific event. So if I'm interested in what happens to patients before and after they go to the uh, ICU, I can align this entire data set by when a patient uh, goes to the ICU. So here we have the red ICU event in the middle, and you can clearly see what happens to the patient uh, both before the ICU and afterwards. And we sort these sequences by the most common ones. So uh, the most common event after the patient is transferred to the ICU, unfortunately, is that they die. Um, the next most common sequence is that they then get transferred to a floor room and get discharged alive. Uh, coming into the ICU, uh, most patients uh, arrive at the hospital and go to the emergency room and then get transferred to the ICU. Um, and then a large chunk of patients get transferred to a floor room before being transferred to the ICU. So what's interesting about this aggregated view as well is you can see anomalous patterns. So if you see down here at the bottom, uh, we have a patient that actually died before they went to the ICU. So certainly this did not actually happen, I would hope. So uh, the aggregated view provides a good way to see the anomalous patterns, like these patients that get uh, bounced back from floor rooms to the ICU a bunch of times, and data entry errors like this one where the patient actually died uh, before they went to the ICU. So with that being said, I'm going to switch over to a slightly more complicated data set. Um, this is a data set of a, a trauma bay at a children's hospital. And so what happens in this situation is that uh, the hospital gets a call about 20 minutes out from an ambulance, and the ambulance says, I'm bringing someone in, assemble a trauma team. And so this trauma team assembles in the trauma bay, the patient comes in, um, and what's supposed to happen is they're supposed to perform a series of steps called the ABCDs um, before they start what they call a secondary survey. So basically this trauma team is supposed to confirm that the patient has an open airway, uh, breath sounds, a pulse, and that they're responsive, and then they begin what they call a secondary survey, which is the head-to-toe survey. And they're supposed to do these tasks in exactly that order, the A, B, C, D, and then the secondary survey. So the question with this data set is, what, is that actually happening? Uh, is the trauma team performing these steps in the correct order? So this is the actual data set 
uh, as we got it. And as you can see, it's actually very difficult uh, to, to make sense of this aggregated view because there are too many events. Uh, it doesn't aggregate quite enough. But what's cool about EventFlow is you can simplify this data set to really zero in on the question you're trying to answer. Um, and you can really produce, you can take an aggregated display that looks like this and really produce something that you can get meaningful insight from. So the first thing we want to do is to remove events that are not pertinent to this question. So there are a couple uh, event categories here that we can just remove from the aggregated view. Uh, when the IV went in, when the patient received ox oxygen, the temperature, um, whether they got a blanket, when they got a blanket, um, and the time that the, they got their pupils measured. Is that, is that what you do with pupils? So I'm going to move the secondary survey up here. So now what we have, these are the events that we're interested in, the airway, the breath sounds, the two pulse events, and the GCS time, which is a measure of responsiveness. And so what the researchers in this case did, which I thought was really cool, is they actually color-coded uh, these events to make it more clear when they're happening in the correct order. So they rainbow-colored it, which I thought was pretty standard for a children's hospital. I had them in the ugly colors. The children's hospital put them in the pretty colors. Story of my life. So we're going to color these as the rainbow, which makes it much easier to tell when these events are actually happening in the correct order. All right. So you can start to tell already that, that not all of these patients, with this case we have 215 patients, uh, you can start to tell already that not all of these patients had uh, the desired sequence, which is the rainbow followed by this gray interval. But we wanted to make a few adjustments first to really bring out the most common patterns and get a better understanding of what was happening. Uh, the first of which is that we have two pulse events, if you can see here, a distal pulse and a central pulse. And I, the idea here is that if a patient doesn't have a distal pulse, which is a pulse in an arm or a leg, uh, then the trauma team is supposed to check for uh, a pulse around their heart. But the idea of these two uh, events and them being in this sequence of required events is that you basically have to make sure the patient has a pulse. And it doesn't really matter um, which one you take first or which one you take second as long as they have a pulse. So what we can do to represent this sort of logic in a way that makes sense in the visualization is we can take these two uh, pulse events and aggregate them into one event. Basically what we're going to do is just make sure that the patient gets their pulse checked at some point. So we're going to take these two categories and create a new category called pulse, which is going to have both the distal pulse and the central pulse in it. And we're going to make it green because that is the color of the rainbow that we've associated with pulse. So we can apply that. And now these two pulse events get aggregated into this new sort of meta pulse event. Let's move this back up lest we disturb the rainbow. All right. So now what we want to do is to eliminate this redundancy. So if there are two pulse events, we don't really care. We just want to make sure that there's one. So we can do that using our find and replace system. What we can do is we can uh, have a query for all the patients that had two of these pulse events. So if we search for these patients, um, what we get is a selection. We can select all the patients that match this. So these are all the patients that had two pulse events. So they got both a distal and a central pulse check. And what we can do is we can replace this sequence using EventFlow's find and replace system with a single pulse event that, that lines up with the, the first pulse that was taken. So we can replace all of these. Rebuilding. And now what we get is a display where each patient, if they had two pulses, uh, now they only have one pulse event in their record. All right, so now we can really start to get a sense of how many patients had this correct pattern of events, let me switch back over to our standard timeline view, and where deviations started, started to occur. So we have this big chunk of patients up at the top, we can click on it just to get a count. So 104 of these 215 patients had um, the exact right sequence of events, and then we got a chunk here of 45 patients who had the first three events in order, but the, their GCS reading was done after the second, secondary survey had begun, and then we have a bunch of other patients that had, you know, different patterns. And so what's clearly happening in a lot of these cases is that the secondary survey is starting uh, before these first four primary events are being completed. So one of the things we did to look at this um, was to align by the start of the secondary survey. So this gives you a sense of which events are, are being done after the secondary survey has already been started. And you can see uh, that the prime offender here is that the GCS reading is done. 
uh, after the secondary survey. Um, in this case, it was done after the entire secondary survey was complete. And you get a good sense of these sort of anomalous patterns. Like in this case, the secondary survey took an extreme amount of time, um, like far beyond the average. And then some of these, some of these patterns, we have all of the ABCDs uh, being done during the secondary survey. So one of the other hypotheses that these uh, children's hospital researchers wanted to look at was there are two different trauma scenarios. One is when you get this call 20 minutes out that a patient's coming, but they can also get a call when the ambulance arrives in the dock to say the patient is here right now, assemble the troops. And so one of the things that uh, these researchers were interested in is whether this now indicator was also indicative of these ABCDEs in the secondary survey uh, not being done in the correct order. Because in this case, the, the trauma team has much less time to organize themselves and get organ uh, sort of delegate these tasks. So what we can do in event flow is we can find the now attribute and turn it on. So what this is going to do is going to break the data set uh, into two sections vertically, uh, one representing the traumas where the patients came in uh, with about 20 minutes of warning and one where they came in with basically no warning. So at the top here, um, we have the patients that came in with a warning. At the bottom where the one is, uh, we have the patients who uh, arrived without too much warning. And so what's interesting, as you can see, is the, the proportion of sequences that are out of order in both of these cases, uh, it's actually pretty proportional. So what was interesting here is it, it appears from this data set that, that patients arriving without any warning doesn't seem to have any effect on, on whether these ABCDs and then the secondary survey uh, get executed in the proper order. So this was interesting to them because this is what they thought would be the prime offender. So basically this uh, analysis and using event flow gave them a much better idea of how their collected data looks, whether they're making errors during it, and it gave them a good sense of how to collect more data to, to glean more insight. So their, their biggest observation was that if they could uh, compile this data faster and then actually record outcomes, they could get a much better sense of which of these missed sequences or the sequences done in the incorrect order, which versions of that actually leads to, to unfortunate patient outcomes versus fine patient outcomes. So this was just a very simple example running through a, a relatively simple data set to, to show you some of event flows features. Hopefully this was helpful and that is all for now. Cheers.